It's time to make your great escape And heaven knows you need a break Forget your duties, forget your cares It's good to get away Hi, and welcome to Augusta Outdoors. Uh, a lot of people go hunting in the swamp, and today we're going to be tagging along with a different kind of hunter. Uh, they're actually archaeologists. They're looking for traces of prehistoric man. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. You made it. Yes, I'm good Rob Pavey from the Augusta Chronicle. Ashley Smallwood. Nice to meet you. Tom Jennings. Tom, Both good to see you. University of West Georgia. Great. Thanks for letting us come out this morning. Yeah, welcome Hi, to the site. And, uh, uh, so tell me what we're looking at back here. Well, basically, we put in uh, block excavations here at a site that we found. Uh, so far, we've been going down five centimeter levels. Uh, we've been finding at some of the deepest levels right now um, artifacts that date to about 5,000 years ago. And uh, specifically, we found Savannah River points. And, and of course, we're not far from the Savannah River, but what denotes a Savannah River Point as opposed to a Flint River Point or sure. an Ogeechee River Point. Yeah, it all has to do a lot with the base, the, the shape of the point base. So Savannah River Points have a stem at the base. And 5,000 years, is that as old as artifacts get in no, this part of the state? No, no, they get much older. So um, even along the Savannah, we have sites that date to at least 13,000 years ago, the Clovis period. And possibly pre-Clovis yeah. artifacts too, which is exciting research as well. So we're definitely going to continue to go down, try to get to the Paleo-Indian period, which starts about 11,000 and on, okay. and then um, hopefully maybe find some early stuff like Clovis stuff around 13,000. Um, generally, we see a lot of patterns at site. If it was a good place over time, or if it was a good place at one point in time, it was likely a good place before. Um, so specifically, the resources here would have been deer, they would have been turkeys, they would have had a lot to hunt, um, specifically deer hunting and hickory. Yeah. Hickory nuts would have been a major resources that would have attracted the late archaic people. Hickory nuts? Mm -hmm. Did they cook them? Yeah, they would. They, yeah, they sure did, and they would make all kinds of pastes and patties and things based on historic records. And of course, thirteen thousand years ago, it wasn't just deer. We're talking about mammoths and other large extinct Pleistocene animals that also lived in these forests. So, so as early as thirteen thousand. If, if you are able to dig down to the thirteen thousand year level, is it possible you'll be getting artifacts from people who actually hunted mammoths here in mammoths, Georgia? Mastodons. Mastodons. Yeah. yeah. How does the process of excavating everything differ from, you know, somebody who's, you know, walking down a washed out dirt road? What, what, sure. what, what, what makes this tell the story that other situations don't? Well, archaeologists, we look for every single clue, like you said. So instead of um, just finding one piece, we like to basically reconstruct the room, reconstruct the house floor reconstruct all the behaviors and activities and how this block connects to that block in time and through time. So if we just found this artifact on the surface, we could say very, very little about a people. Um, but now that we have all the clues, all the pieces of flakes that were broken in the process of production, um, the little uh, the hearth that they created, the steatite pieces that we're picking up that they would carve to make into bowls and things, we get a more complete picture of their lifestyle. <laughs> 